Despite what some people would like you to believe, Tesla's electric vehicles are very capable in winter weather, and in many ways they outperform their internal combustion engine counterparts. However, there are a few downsides to driving any electric vehicle during the winter, like for instance, range loss that is important to bring up. So in a battle against the elements, just how well do Teslas really perform? Let's talk about the good and the bad. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. One of the biggest downsides to driving an electric vehicle during the winter comes down to the range loss associated with colder temperatures, which is much in part due to the extra energy being spent keeping the battery pack and cabin warm. In order for lithium ion batteries to function optimally, there is an ideal temperature range. And of course, the battery management system of a vehicle works to keep a battery within that tolerance, not too hot, and not too cold. And during the winter, really the main thing is keeping that battery pack warm. And so keeping the battery pack warm and keeping you warm while you're in the cabin, that of course consumes energy, which normally would be spent powering the motors and driving you down the road. However, do note that all Teslas are now equipped with a very efficient heat pump as compared to in the past when they had resistive heaters. And because of this, the range loss associated with colder temperatures is less than it previously was. Now, when it comes to just how much of a difference a heat pump makes versus resistive heating in cold, this Electrek article from December of 2020 talked about how YouTuber Bjorn uh, did a video comparison of a 2019 Tesla Model 3 without a heat pump and compared that to a Model 3 with a heat pump. As this article mentions, after running the heat in these cars for around three hours, the Model 3 with the heat pump consumed around one third as much energy as the vehicle with the resistive heating. So as you can see, there's a huge difference between a Tesla vehicle with a heat pump and one without. And this is definitely a huge plus if you live in a colder climate. Now, when it comes to the exact amount of range loss that you can expect while driving a Tesla, on average. In order to get some good hard data, I once again reached out to Tessie, who is the maker of the Android and Apple phone application for your Tesla, which allows you to monitor a number of different things about your Tesla, including battery health. And they graciously once again shared some data and a few graphs with me showing the average range loss that Tesla drivers experienced during colder temperatures as compared to their respective EPA ratings. Now, one of the key reasons why I like to get this data from Tessie is because it covers a huge data set. For instance, on Tessie's website, they recently put up a page showing global Tesla statistics. And as you can see here, this data as of this screenshot was updated December 21st, and it included data from over 29.6 million drives. Now do note that I assume that this data set, uh, this 29.6 million or so drives, it includes vehicles, Teslas with a heat pump and without a heat pump. So uh, if you have a heat pump, your numbers might be a little bit lower than this, but this is a good general average for Tesla EVs. As you can see in this chart that Tessie provided, um, there is kind of an optimal temperature for range when it comes to an EV, and that's somewhere around that 21 to 26 Celsius, which is around 70 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's just say 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 to around 26 or 27 C. And as you can see, as you get colder, and especially as you approach zero degrees Celsius and beyond, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, the range loss associated with these colder temperatures starts becoming pretty significant. Now moving beyond the combined chart and moving to the individual vehicles, let's start with the Model 3. As you can see here, on average, if you're driving in temperatures around seven degrees Fahrenheit or negative 14 degrees Celsius, you can expect somewhere around 60% of the EPA rated range actually being available uh, during that drive. Interestingly enough, you also see a little bit of a range loss associated with really hot temperatures. Once again, because the battery pack is requiring more cooling during those temperatures. And while that drop in range is not quite as drastic, it is still something noticeable. As we move to the Tesla Model S, you can see that the range loss associated with colder temperatures is somewhat similar to the curve of the Model 3. However, at negative 14 degrees Celsius, or once again, seven degrees Fahrenheit, you can see that that number is a few percentage points lower than the Model 3. 
Interestingly enough, on the opposite spectrum, on the hot side, it looks like the range loss associated with summer temperatures is actually less with the Model S than the Model 3. I'm guessing this is because the Tesla Model S includes the smaller 18650 battery cells as compared to a large number of Model 3s which include the slightly larger 2170 battery cells. So it's a little bit easier likely to cool the 18650 cells because they're smaller. So it equates to a little bit less range loss in the summer temperatures. When it comes to the Model Y, on the colder end, that curve looks very similar to the Model 3. However, when it comes to summer temperatures, it appears like the range loss for the Model Y is actually more extreme than the Model 3, which is definitely interesting for sure. And here's that same curve for the Tesla Model X. Now in just a minute, I'll move beyond the percentages and give some actual range estimates for these vehicles. But I wanted to make it very clear that internal combustion engine vehicles also have less range and they have less efficiency during the winter as well. As stated on fueleconomy.gov, fuel economy tests show that in city driving, a conventional gasoline car's gas mileage is roughly 15% lower at 20 degrees Fahrenheit than it would be at 77 degrees Fahrenheit it can drop as much as 24% for short three to four mile trips. For those of you who prefer the Celsius measurement for temperature, 20 degrees Fahrenheit is in between negative six and negative seven degrees Celsius. So when it comes to some range expectations for a Tesla electric vehicle at 20 degrees Fahrenheit, using the data that Tessie provided, I created a chart showing the average range loss as compared to the EPA rated range for each of these vehicles. For instance, when equipped with a 19-inch Tempest wheels, the Tesla Model S long-range all-wheel drive variant has an EPA-rated range of 405 miles. However, based on the chart that Tessie provided, you can very well expect a range of around 259 miles of actual range if you're driving in weather that's at around 20 degrees Fahrenheit or once again, negative six or negative seven degrees Celsius. The most efficient version of the Model 3 gets up to 358 miles of range, and during that same temperature range, you can actually expect somewhere around 240 miles of range. The most efficient Model X version gets up to 351 miles of EPA rated range, and once again, you can expect at 20 degrees Fahrenheit somewhere around 225 miles of usable range. The most efficient long range all wheel drive Model Y gets 330 miles of EPA rated range. And once again, you can expect somewhere around 221 miles of usable range during that temperature range. And then lastly, I've demonstrated what an internal combustion engine vehicle range might look like if you had an EPA range of around 350 miles with a full tank of gasoline. During that same winter temperature range, as the EPA pointed out, you should expect a 15% loss or so, which would mean you can expect slightly under 300 miles of actual usable range during that time as well. Now these estimates are all for 20 degrees Fahrenheit or negative six, negative seven Celsius. But if you move to colder temperatures, these numbers of course go down a little bit further. So as you can see, winter driving with a Tesla electric vehicle or any other electric vehicle does have some negatives. Now I did wanna show one more chart here and using that same data, I don't know if you noticed, but when it came to that data that Tessie provided, which was as compared to EPA estimates, you can see that based on this data, as compared to EPA ratings, most Tesla drivers get a little bit below the EPA estimated range. And the optimal range for these vehicles is once again, right around that 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit range. So once again, I think it's important that we take a look at this chart once again and compare the range loss associated with the average at about 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit as compared to 20 degrees Fahrenheit and see what the actual range loss is as compared to average real world range instead of EPA rated range, which is once again, a little more optimistic than what you actually get in real life. So you can see for the most efficient long range all wheel drive version of these vehicles, as compared to real world range data at the optimal temperature, there's somewhere between a 23 to 25% range loss associated with these Tesla EVs. Now, obviously, once again, these numbers that I'm talking about are just averages. Um, if you have colder temperatures, these numbers might be more drastic. If you have a Tesla with a heat pump, your numbers will likely be slightly better than this because this data includes vehicles with and without a heat pump. So if you wanna know the actual real-time energy usage of your Tesla EV during winter driving, you can simply pull up the energy app on your touchscreen in your Tesla, and it will show you real-time data and a projected range based on your exact driving habits and environment. 
Now, of course, when we talk about colder winter weather, we're not only talking about temperatures, but we're also talking about inclement weather, which includes snow and ice. Of course, it's always a good idea to equip your vehicle with good winter tires because that makes a huge difference when it comes to winter performance for any vehicle. But when coupled with the right tires, Tesla's traction control system coupled with their highly responsive electric motors allow Tesla's electric vehicles, especially the all wheel drive models, to perform very well in somewhat slippery conditions. Driving in snow and ice can be dangerous in any vehicle. However, it appears like Teslas are a lot better in this environment than a lot of other vehicles. The Engineering Explained YouTube channel has a great video showing how well a performance Tesla Model 3 does on snowy roads. And I definitely recommend you watch that full video, which I will link to in the description below. But suffice it to say, Jordan from the Engineering Explained YouTube channel, based on his test, he appeared to be very impressed with how well his Model 3 performed and how much traction it was able to maintain. Now, another topic that I must talk about when it comes to Teslas and winter driving comes down to something that probably several of you have already put in the comments below, and that comes down to freezing door handles and freezing windows. This is, of course, something that uh, Tesla owners have experienced in the past and will experience in the future. And this is because the handles of all Tesla's vehicles are recessed into the body of the vehicle. And while this does give the vehicle a nice clean look, and it's a look that I definitely prefer, when it comes to water getting on the vehicle and then freezing, it can make it very difficult to open the vehicle with the handles. Thankfully, however, Tesla does have some great solutions for this problem, and it's way less of a problem than it was before. On the support section of Tesla's website where they list winter driving tips, they address this issue for each one of their vehicles. For instance, for the Model S, they say the door handles are designed to break through ice when they extend from the vehicle. For the Model X, they mention the front doors are equipped with ice breakers that push the automatic doors open even when encased in ice. Open a front door using the Tesla app or key fob if it is difficult to press the handle. And then for the Model 3 and the Model Y, Tesla states, you can now unlatch the driver door via the Tesla app to open it without using the handle. To access this feature in the app, touch and hold one of the quick controls that display below your car to open the customized controls view. Select unlatch door, then drag and drop the control into one of your quick control spots. You can now unlatch the door with a single tap from the app's home screen. They also give advice for manually breaking the handle free if you don't want to use the app. And they say, quote, to manually clear a frozen handle, bump the handle with the end of your fist while wearing a glove until the ice is broken. Now, of course, there are a lot of ways you can mitigate this from happening. And one of them comes down to uh, preheating your vehicle before you get into it. This is definitely something that Tesla recommends on the winter driving tips uh, page. And it's definitely something that I recommend that you do because you can actually heat up your Tesla vehicle and turn on the HVAC system before you get in the vehicle. And uh, for instance, defrost the windows and, and get the cabin all nice and toasty before you get in it. And this likely will keep you from having a lot of these issues if you just pre-plan a little bit. Now, when it comes to how well a Tesla vehicle can defrost itself and how quickly it can do that, I found a great YouTube video, which I'll link to below from Sask Tesla. And this video shows that the owner of this Tesla Model 3 was able to heat their cabin from negative 24 degrees Celsius to a positive 20 degrees Celsius in around four minutes. So after four minutes, the vehicle was ready to drive and was warm inside. So it can be done very quickly, even in extreme cold temperatures. So in the end, with all things considered, as we've talked about, Tesla's electric vehicles, although they do have a few small compromises in cold temperatures, especially when it comes to range loss, overall, they make great winter vehicles. Do let me know what you think in the comments section below, especially if you own a Tesla vehicle and you drive it in cold winter climates. I'd love to hear your actual experience as well. And does your experience line up with what I've been talking about? Or have you had a different experience than I've talked about? I'd love to hear from you, and I'm sure that would be helpful to other people as well. And also, I want to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.